It's time for Be in the Driver's Seat with Regina, the queen of car loans, and mental health expert, Dr. Teresa Moore. A Saturday morning mix of cars, credit, and wellness created just for you. Brought to you by Joe Lunghammer Chevrolet of Waterford. Plan your next vehicle purchase or get your credit rolling in the right direction with Regina today. And now, Regina, the queen of car loans, and Dr. Teresa Moore. Good morning, good morning. You are listening to Be In The Driver's Seat. I am your host, Regina, Regina Eileen Woodard. Regina Eileen Woodard, the queen of car loans. And I'm sitting right next to my favorite girl, my favorite girl in the whole wide world, my little sister, Dr. Teresa Moore. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. Yay. (laughs) You know, I'm excited today because we have this young man. I'm calling young because he's younger than me. I'm older. We have a special guest that we're going to introduce to you later, a little bit later in the show. But... His name is the la- the legendary Willie Mack. Good Willie morning, Mack. Michigan. Good morning, good Michigan. Morning, good morning, good morning. I love it. I love it. He is in the house this morning. Did you hear him, Queen, say the legend is here? Well, well you know. <laughs> the legend is here. I, the, you know, him being the legend, you know, I just, I'm just, I'm super excited because when you have a legend that come in, they come, he, com- he commands the room. Mm. Because I remember when I first, when I met him over the weekend, and we had to move move our show around a little bit, right? Yeah. And we had to say, you know what? You are going to be here today, this Saturday morning, with the Queen and Dr. T. Yes. Yes. Come on, somebody. So, we got the legend in the room. Y'all need, if y'all was in here, I'm, I'm laughing because I'm looking at him, y'all. He's smelling good. He did came to Michigan and he over here, y'all. I told him, don't hug me because I might get in trouble. <laughs> well, you, well, you know, you know what? We don't, we don't want you to get in trouble, but you know what? The great thing about you not getting in trouble. Yeah. Because your house has the Lord in it. And when true. the Lord is in the house, That's true, y'all. he covers everything. Listen, you know, okay. your husband don't have to worry about nothing because he know you out here doing things, exactly. doing your thing. He ain't got to worry about nothing. That's right. Listen, Fred Moore stands tall and all in well, his glory. Stands tall. Worry. Stands tall. Worry. But you know what? <laughs> to d- this morning, Dr. T. Yes. I want to just get into talking about relationships with money, relationships with credit, the front pew. Folk versus in the room, folks. Let yeah. me repeat that. Relationship with money, credit, front pew, folks. What, you got to tell me what the front pew folks are. You know who it is because, you know, I didn't I didn't sit on the front pew. I sat, I sat in the middle at Listen, church. Front, <laughs> front pew people is those that sit in your very front row, those that have direct access to you. People can come in the room, but those that sit in the front pew, you have given them permission to sit there. So they got the right to sit there in your front pew. But, but, but I thought that when you give people... Permission, you got to give people permission to sit in the front pew. Why are you giving people permission to sit in the front pew and they don't deserve it? Well, here's the thing. Everybody shouldn't have access to you. So those that are in the front pew, you you definitely want those people there. You may have people in the room, but in the front pew, that means you're sitting here because I value you. I want you in my life. You have meaning in my life. And because of that, you get this space. But oftentimes we put people in the front pew and time helps tell the story. Sometimes we have to remove them off the bench. So so when you look at being on the front, front pew, do, do people always stay on the, the front pew? Because how I look at it is sometimes people are in my life for a reason, for a season and not a reason. Mm, that's right? good. So a season and not a reason. Mm. So what I look at now is I have the people that I grew up with mm-hmm. and me growing up with them, they ain't always in my life right now. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing, you know, time brings about changes. So those who start with you may not necessarily end with you. But that doesn't mean that, you know, it, it wasn't a good relationship. That just means that their season is up. But so, but you got to be okay with it. You got to be okay when your season's up. Yeah. You know, okay, you know, well, you, may, you, you let your friend off the bench, you put him on the front pew, 
right in your mm-hmm, life, mm-hmm. but you might have to put them in the back because you know what they didn't they did they they didn't give you the they didn't give you the life the, the what's the what they give you when you go jump in the lake Listen, and, and you're about to you, you about got the, the lifeguard you got the lifeguard you. they didn't send you the lifeguard to <laughs> save you so okay. you needed to put them back in the back right but yeah. that's when we talk about the relationships with money mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know do you you know when you got that relationship with money you are gonna value it and you are gonna put that money aside. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. But see, here's the thing is, you know, money solves all things that is in the word. But oftentimes we get so caught up with money because we have it. We're accessible to us. Really, your relationship with money needs to matter, because if I'm just making money to spend money, what am I really doing? So your money really needs to work for you and not you work for your money. Well, you know what? I'm going to give you a clap on that, because you know what? Mm-hmm. This is how I oh, this is my motto. Do you know where your money going? You got to tell your money where to go. That's right. When, you know, when I put that $120 in my gas tank yesterday, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I told my money uh, at the beginning of the month where it's going to go. Mm-hmm. Because I figured I got to fill up every Sunday. Yeah. I'm filling up every Sunday. Yeah. So what is that? $120 mm-hmm. times four. Yeah. I'm going to be putting in my gas tank so every. $80 a yeah, month. That, that's yeah. a lot of money, right? It is. It so, is. But if I don't tell my money where to go, yeah. I'm not going to have my money. Yeah, so Queen, let me say this though first. You know, when we talk about money, God is over my money. So I dedicate my money to God first and I pay my tithes. So that means that my money is going to go where it needs to go anyway. I'm not going to have any lack because I put God over my money. When you put that's God good, over that's your good. finances, that's good. That's then good. You, you dedicate that's them good. to Him. That's good. Then you don't have to worry about where your money's going, but you have to be smart. But God that's makes good. us be good stewardess over the things that's that good. He gives unto us. But you know, when I said, I wouldn't have no money. I meant I wasn't gonna have no gas. Yeah. If I had no money, I said I said in my my last sentence I wasn't gonna have no money. If I had no money, I ain't gonna have no gas, yeah. right? So yeah. that means that I'm gonna have to barely get to where I'm going. Mm. You know, I'm gonna have to cut yeah. some things out what I'm doing That's right. because I didn't let the Lord tell me where my money needed to go. That's true. Let me say it again. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't let the Lord tell me where my money needs to go. Well, listen, because the Lord is ahead of my life, uh, you know, I'm not going to have lack. I'm just not going to live in lack. I'm not going to have it because he's my shepherd and in him I have everything that I need. So I dedicate my money to him. And so since we're talking about money, we also need to talk about credit, being good stewardess over our credit. The Lord requires us to be good stewardess over anything that he puts our hands to do. And it's up to us to be that good steward. And so when we abuse credit, when we abuse people and when we abuse money, we're going against the grain. We're going against what the word says. Well, let me just give you an example on that. So when we say abuse, Views and credit, that means that you then took that vacation. You figure, oh, yeah, I'm about to go to Florida. I'm about to take my kids to Disney World, but I got to pay my car payment, and I'm going to let my car payment be late, 30 days. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a ding in your credit Mm -hmm. because you let your decision go to take your, your family on a trip. Mm-hmm. Versus paying your car note. Yeah. And you figure you're going to let your kids have a good time mm-hmm. instead of worrying about having a vehicle, the transportation that you're going to need. Yeah, and you know that's important that you say that because there's a time and a season for everything. And if your money is not long enough for you to pay your rent, your your car note hmm. or whatever that is, then Where you, you shouldn't be? be going to Disney World hmm. anyway. So oftentimes hmm. we try to mimic what those in Go the ahead. world are Go doing. Go ahead, doctor. Go really ahead, doctor. We shouldn't T. be mimicking them. Go because ahead. Because we have to stay in. Sometimes we got to stay in our own lane, y'all. We need to know what we're able to afford. You have to yes. be wise. Yes. He who wins souls Amen. is wise, right? So Amen. if you're going to be wise, you got to be wise in every area of your life. So being unwise means going to Florida knowing that you need to pay your car note or your rent. So what's going to be more important, your kids laughing, playing in the sun, or you sitting on the curb? Or sitting on the curb, or you know what, or you figure, you know what, I'm going to give you an example on this. I'm not paying my car insurance this month. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pay for it too much because I know I have my income tax check coming. Listen, you so know. I'm going to take my trip. Because I got my income tax check coming. Listen. What? You know that's what we do. You, you know, know that's what now, we you do. Know that was the second holiday after Christmas. Right. You know the right after Christmas, you know you was waiting on that income tax. You know check. you were. But you know, I never ever had the chance to really get one. I was always in the red. But okay, but for Well you know no, you it. was always in the red because you you were working a job yeah. and you had a business. Right. So right, but now 
You you your own you you know what well, let me just boss, say this. Yeah. You your own boss. That's correct. You you know you got the master, the Lord, the yeah, master, yeah. but you your own you your you your own boss. But let me say that when I say in the red, I, I that doesn't mean negative. That means I'm sending a check to the I R and the S. So that's what that means. Yeah, that's not I knew that, what it meant. I just know, wanted to clarify with my anybody peeps. anything. I, I don't <laughs> want to owe folks anything because yes. that's being a good steward too. Yes. The owe no man nothing but to love them. Yes, yes, yes. But you know, okay, so, you know, we we talk about people, let me just say this, when you put people on the front pew, right, Yeah. Yeah. you meet people, to me, this this is how I look at it, this is how life been working for me the last 15, 20 years, right? I'm meeting people now that I've had relationships that I've sold cars to, that are being closer to me now. That they ever have before, mm. and that's just like you. You know, mm. let me just bring it on in, right? Yeah, you bring, know, you bring used to here, you, you, you used to be, you know. Now you on the front pew, okay. right? But yes, you wasn't on the back pew before. You were my customer, yeah. and you were on the front pew mm-hmm. with my customers. Yeah. Now you on the front pew in my personal life, yeah. right? Yeah, because you trans you transition from the cars. You was mm-hmm. on one of my front pew customers. Mm-hmm. Now you went on to the front pew, been in my personal life. Yes, and yes. when y'all brought you in my personal life, we joined with this show. Yeah. Now we just, you know, we not only going to take over Michigan, <laughs> right? Because it's you can download over. that app. Yeah. If you in Florida, yeah. if you in Tennessee, yeah. if you in New York, yeah. if you in, if you out the country, yeah. download that app, Detroit Praise Network. Yeah. And you know what? Listen, because you know we we here. Yes. And the great thing about I love about you is that you got me thinking about more about the front pew. Yeah. P- p- pew. Am I saying yeah. that right? You saying pew right? Yeah. Right, right, right. So. <laughs> you know, I, I love that because with relationships, yeah, your relationship with God got to be right. Yeah. Your relationship with money. Relationship with credit. Yeah. Your relate if your relationship ain't right with your your parents when you were yeah. growing up. Come on here. That's good. You know, and then now because you mimic your parents. Mm-hmm. If your parents didn't have good relationship with money, and mm-hmm. you didn't have nobody in your life with that had a good yeah. relationship that's true. with money yeah. that raised you. Yeah, that's real. You know what you gonna have? Been yo, you gonna you gonna yeah. you gonna have what your parents or whoever was your mentor. You are gonna have their what? You gonna have their same traits. Their same attributes. They say the apple don't fall far from the tree. But here's the thing. What I love about it is your beginning doesn't not necessarily dictate your end. Go so now. Therefore, you may start. You may have started at the bottom, but you can rise to the top. You may fall, but you can get up time and time again. You just don't have to stay down. So in terms of even relationships with people, you just have to put people in their designated spaces and places. But God is always going to send people in your space at that time that you you need them. Because there's a time and a season for everything under the sun that's written. And then when it comes to credit, when you don't know a thing, then you can't do what you don't know. But that's when you have people come in to to help you and to help you uh, to learn how to take care of credit, to help you learn how to purchase a vehicle, how to purchase a house. Uh, if it, that's when you come into the knowledge of people who will show you how to get your mind right, to sit on the couch and have some reconstructing thinking. That's when you get uh, involved with individuals you surround yourself with those who can help you and that's what this life is about surrounding yourself by those you can help and then once you help get once you receive the help then you go help somebody else this life we live is really not for us it's to help somebody else so how can we help somebody else build their credit how can we help somebody else purchase a car how can we help somebody else purchase a home how can we help somebody else get mentally stable that's good that's how good. can we? That's good. That's the good. temple. Yes. How can we help? But you know, that's why we started this show, being the driver's seat. We've been around. We've been on since um, April 2021. And you know, when we look at being the driver's seat, we look at we want to put you in the driver's seat for whatever you do. We want you to be in the driver's seat first. It's cars, credit, and uh, mental wellness. But if you think about it, it's mental wellness first. Because if your mental is not right, that's correct. You know yeah. what? You gonna have issues buying a car. That's right. And you're not gonna be able to. You're not gonna be able to buy that car because you're not gonna have to put your finances in order, That's right? right. Yeah. Then you, your mental, your mental awareness is not gonna. It's gonna hurt you because of your credit, right? Yeah. It's gonna. You're not gonna be able to take it yeah. that far as with your credit. But then also your car. The cars and credit. Everything evolves around the mental awareness. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, because as a man thinketh, so is he. So if you think that for the moment, do you think that I'm gonna live in this moment right here and not think for the long term, the long run? Then you just gonna have the simple things, the quick things. But we trying to, to to create you a mindset that wants to, you know, um, purchase the things that you need in this life. Well, you know what? I love this segment is because we um we give you the real deal. Oh yeah, we give it to you from the heart. Yeah, and people get on the radio and they just don't give things to the heart. Yeah, but you know what we. Yeah. Gotta go pay some bills, but we're gonna be back with the legendary. Give us his name, Willie Mac. The legendary Willie Mac. We'll be right back after we pray, pay a few bills. Regina the Queen of Carlone's here with Joe Longhammer Chevrolet. If you're looking to get into a new or used vehicle with affordable rates, we've got your back. Regardless of your financial situation, I can get you financed today. My lenders are making unheard of deals where others simply cannot. In June, we're giving away 12 months of Jack's Unlimited Car Wash memberships for free to the first 25 people who buy a new or used car from me. Just Google Regina the Queen of Carlone's. Chevrolet, find new roads. Call Brenda Davis now at 248-909-9711 and get started on your new home purchase or sale. Brenda D. Davis, the realtor that moves you. Whether you're relocating to Michigan from another state or country, moving across town, upgrading, or downsizing, Brenda Davis from Century 21 Town & Country Real Estate can make it a smooth, hassle-free experience. Our award-winning offices and the outstanding personal service offered by Brenda Davis and her professional sales associates guide you through the main of infinite details surrounding the purchase or sale of your home. Helping you become familiar with a new area. Finding the right home for your family. Arranging financing and settling in in a timely fashion is our priority. Assuring that your relocation is a pleasant experience is our ultimate goal. Brenda Davis, an associate broker, is a 21-year career licensed realtor, a member of the National Association of Realtors, and a board member of the North Oakland County Board of Realtors. Call Brenda Davis now at 248-909-9711 and get started on your new home purchase or sale. Brenda D. Davis, the realtor that moves you. We're back and you're listening to Be In The Driver's Seat. I'm your host, Regina Eileen Woodard, the queen of car loans. And I'm sitting next to who? Dr. T. This is Dr. Teresa Moore, co-host to the queen. Yes, yes. So today, I first want to give a shout out to um, Donna Brown. Donna Brown from the Yak, from Pontiac, um, came up to the dealership and... uh, on uh, on Friday, she sends me customers all the time, and she said, "I need you to change your show around. I need you and Dr. T to change your show around." And I said, "Why? Why am I doing that?" <laughs> she said, "Regina, I got a man, a young man that I need I need you to have on a show. You need mm-hmm. to make this happen because he's doing some great things in in our community. He flew in, mm-hmm. but he also does things all around the world." But today we're gonna have on our show is the legendary Willie Mack. The legendary. He is, he is from he is from Camp. Is it where, where are you from? It's Camelton, Florida. Camelton, Florida. Mm-hmm. He grew up there. He has been doing the blues since age ten. And you guys are probably saying, you know what, Regina? Why do you have a blues guy on the station today? Well, let me tell you why I do. It's because this young man has has touched a lot of lives because his. Being in the music business, he's able to to to, to draw the kids in, right? Mm-hmm. Draw the kids in with gun violence. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about how gun violence changed his life. Yeah. Gun yeah. violence changed his life. I'm sorry. Blues changed his life. And the, and the gun violence, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He took that to another level around the world because he's speaking to kids that are holding their gun up mm-hmm. instead of having it held down mm-hmm. or not even having a gun. So, Dr. T, I wanted yeah. to give a little bit about his bio, but I just want us to get in and just start talking to him yeah. because you're going to find out about him. You don't, you shouldn't have to read a person's bio, yeah. right? Because, yeah. you know, if he's here in the room, yes. he can tell you where he's from and where he's looking to go. Yes. So, listen, the legend is here. So, Willie Mack, tell, tell the listeners today who inspired you or what inspired you? Pain, pain, pain inspired me. It was the death of my father. Uh, mm-hmm. I didn't have an outlet to uh, to 
you know, I, I didn't even cry. And so, you know, it, it was very hard for me. And my mother raised us eight, uh, eight boys and two girls. And then I had five more sisters on my daddy's side. And so um, uh, we was, my, my dad took my mother out the cotton field and taught her how to finish drywall. And that became the family business for over 50 years. And uh, that's my trade. And uh, doing drywall and, and getting through that pain, I used music to do that. Mm. And so the first time I hit the stage, I was very young, probably at the age of 12, um, I was in a little show at school, and and, I, and the people caught the people's attention and went, went from there. Uh, then I started doing it um, all throughout my life until I started maturing with my music. I used to curse in my music and everything. Uh, and then when I started maturing with it, it turned, it started changing in me. I didn't see the change until later. And then blues, uh, I was uh, homeless. I did time in the military. Mm-hmm. I did eight years in the military. But after that, I became homeless. Uh, I was became on drugs. And uh, I also uh, just lived from house to house. Uh, never, uh, I never seen my kids. I wasn't the father that most kids would want in their life. But I was still a father. I just wasn't there. So I just mm-hmm. getting back into my kids' life. And uh, I'm using my platform in the music industry to talk to the kids because I seen that while I was on stage that I started reaching the hearts of kids. Mm. And these are the same kids that's holding weapons and guns and using guns to not on, not to protect themselves but to cause harm because of what music and some music is doing to inspire kids instead of to motivate them to be positive. Mm. Well, you know, I was, I was reading in your bio um, – that right out of graduating from high school, that you actually went to the United States Army. So how did the United United States Army, how did the Army change you and make you into the man you are today? Because I know you had, um, you know, you had the blues, you had the singing, you had the singing in your heart, but the United States Army, the Army had a little bit to play with it, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. The Army taught me how to sing cadence. And cadence was what it was used for is to motivate soldiers before they go into war. So they would use song. Song is music is so powerful that, it, that it's a powerful language. And uh, also, I was never the type to uh, like uh, weapons. But in the military, you, we use weapons all the time. We train on different weapons. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but, but we was trained on them to use them properly. And we was trained to know when to use a weapon, and we was trained when not to use a weapon. Mm -hmm. And when I got outside of the military, I started seeing uh, these kids. uh, um, I was around kids that would that would handle weapons. They first of all, when they called them guns, I knew it was a problem. Uh, We call them weapons. And so when they when they hold these weapons, they these weapons was pointed at people. And so we so so um, so I started seeing a problem then and then. Then you had started having the mass shootings going on, and these shootings was involving teenagers. But and I, but, but I don't mean to it. cut you off here, but you said one key thing at the beginning. You said that you were trained with the weapons. See, it's a difference when you are trained to do things. People, you know, if you like doing something, you know, you you're in the service, you know, okay, you like guns, right? You yeah. have, you have, but. You, when you went to the service, you were trained how to use the weapon. Properly. So anything you do, you got to be trained. It's mm-hmm. just like when you want to go in the kitchen, you want to be a cook, right? Yeah. If you have somebody to train you, that's right. then that's how you grow. That's right. Yeah. So, so Willie Mac, I, I hear you. And I hear a lot of your story that you're saying it was birthed through pain. And I just want to say, you know, what God has for you, it is for you. When he gives you a gifting, it doesn't matter if you go to the military it doesn't matter it where you are. You're telling us that there was pain that helped birth who you are. Yes. So yes. let's talk a little bit about how you were birthed into who you are today because it's your gifting. So you, you're you reaching the hearts of others through uh, your music, through blues, but it's the gifting of God that he gave you. That's so right. let's talk about that. Uh, when, I was, when I was five years old, I got a twin brother. His name is John Arthur Wilson, and I'm the oldest twin by six minutes. Uh, we used to sit outside while my family was inside watching Soul Train. Uh, we sat outside beside the road, and angels used to sing to us. Mm-hmm. And they sung to us for years. And uh, I never knew, you know, what it meant until I got older. Once I got older, I called my brother and, and, and asked him, do he remember the angels singing to us? And 
Um, I was in front of my ex-wife at the time, and and he texts back and said, yes, I thought I was the only one. I thought people would think I was crazy. What and, age was this? Uh, we was five years old when mm. uh, this happened to us. Um, it, and the angels sung to us amongst the trees. And uh, I never sung in a church choir, but I went to church. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've never, I didn't believe in God uh, until uh, later on in my life. Uh, there was something that happened to me about a year ago. And uh, I, I could never explain that feeling to anyone. Uh, but I, after that, I dropped to my knees and I accepted the, the responsibility that God gave me, which was to use this platform to talk to our youth and educate our elders. That's amazing. So, so you let, let's talk real quick because I know we got two minutes left before we take a break. But tell me real quick about this experience when you dropped to your knees and you committed to the Lord. Oh man, uh, it was it was a fit. I didn't see no one or nothing, but I knew that there was a powerful presence in the room, and I just started crying. Uh, I knew there's something uh, great. I've already seen where I, where I'm going. Mm-hmm. It was shown to me, and uh, my name they, they, is the legendary because I speak everything into existence. Mm. I, I don't have to look side to side. I just look forward, and and uh, I, I trust in God. I, I know that I've been gifted by God, and I know that I'm here more than just for to sell records. You know, I just want to say this, that the Lord said in his word that he knew you before you were formed. So you were the legendary when you were in your mother's womb and the hand of the Lord was upon you then. So those angels that you saw, they were with you all along. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then, you know what? We're going to be right back and we're going to talk about that coming out the womb, coming out the womb, being ready. Being ready because you came out the room being ready because right. you know what? This is how you make a difference on life right now. That's Sometimes right. you got to get a, a place in your life to realize how you're making a difference. That's right. Now you realize. But we'll be right back. Regina the Queen of Carlons here with Joe Longhammer Chevrolet. If you're looking to get into a new or used vehicle with affordable rates, we've got your back. Regardless of your financial situation, I can get you financed today. My lenders are making unheard of deals where others simply cannot. In June, we're giving away 12 months of Jack's Unlimited Car Wash memberships for free to the first 25 people who buy a new or used car from me. Just Google Regina the Queen of Carlons. Chevrolet, find new roads. Call Brenda Davis now at 248-909-9711 and get started on your new home purchase or sale. Brenda D. Davis, the realtor that moves you. Whether you're relocating to Michigan from another state or country, moving across town, upgrading, or downsizing, Brenda Davis from Century 21 Town & Country Real Estate can make it a smooth, hassle-free experience. Our award-winning offices and the outstanding personal service offered by Brenda Davis and her professional sales associates guide you through the main of infinite details surrounding the purchase or sale of your home. Helping you become familiar with a new area. Finding the right home for your family. Arranging financing and settling in. In a timely fashion is our priority. Assuring that your relocation is a pleasant experience is our ultimate goal. Brenda Davis, an associate broker, is a 21-year career licensed realtor, a member of the National Association of Realtors, and a board member of the North Oakland County Board of Realtors. Call Brenda Davis now at 248-909-9711 and get started on your new home purchase or sale. Brenda D. Davis, the realtor that moves you. We're back with the legendary Willie Mack. Yeah. Talk to us real quick about coming out the womb. Coming out the womb. Uh, I just, I just when I got in this music field and uh, I used that platform to to uh, start creating, I just never limited my ability to create. I owned that ability. That's what I had to do. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, what what current events do you have coming up? Oh, we got we. I'll be in Florida doing some anniversaries. Uh, we got specific dates, and they can go to my page. It's gonna you can find me anywhere on social media. Just go to my page at the Legendary Willie Mac, and uh, we're gonna post those events on there. They are posted now. The Legendary Willie Mac. So what what is your social media platforms? Can you give it to us? Because, you know, I, I'm listening to the show. 
I want to book you, yeah. right? Yeah. I want to find you on social media. I want to go to your TikTok. I want to go to your Facebook. I want to get into everything you know. I want to follow you because you you're in you're 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 living where? What what, what state are you living in? I live in Mississippi. Mississippi. Yeah. Go ahead and give us your social media platform. Well, I'm going to make it easy for y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, I want y'all to just make sure y'all go online and type in these words. The legendary Willie Mac, W-I-L-L-Y-M-A-C. And the, you can find that name anywhere. Type it in. You can find me. Thank you for joining us on the Being the Driver's Seat. What last words you have, Dr. T? Thank you so much for joining us. You are, uh, your story is so legendary. I love it. Thank you. The legend is here. Thank you for listening to the beat. Well, thank you for listening to Be in the Driver's Seat. And we'll see you or you'll hear us next Saturday, same time, 8.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. You've been listening to Be in the Driver's Seat with Regina, the queen of car loans, and mental health expert, Dr. Teresa Moore. Brought to you by Joe Blumhammer Chevrolet of Waterford. Be in the driver's seat. A Saturday morning mix of cars, credit, and wellness created just for you. From Regina, the queen of car loans, and Dr. Teresa Moore, thank you for listening. 